Oral History Committee. The person being interviewed is Mr. Richard Saunders, and the interviewer is John Glenn. This interview is being taken on Monday, May the 14th, 1979. Mr. Saunders, one of the uh, things that you hear about when you first come to Bonham is the cotton mill. Yeah. Uh, uh, could you tell us a little bit about that in relationship to... Uh, well, it was organized in 1900. The, uh, my father was in a drug business and I guess he wanted to get out into something else and he got interested in it and got some of the well-to-do men in town and agreed to put money in it and, and it's quite an undertaking. They didn't anybody know anything about textile engineering or making cloth in Barnum then. I don't know how many trips he made to the Carolinas. That was where the textile industry was flourishing at that time. Was it a corporation to start out with? Oh, no, a corporation, yes. Mm -hmm. You get the men that had money here in town interested in it. Could you and tell? Could you tell me some of the, those men? Lee Horsel, Charlie Horsel, mm -hmm. A. B. Scarbrand. And well, of course, uh, some of their relatives are still here then, I presume. Uh, yes, uh, the Horsell family still uh, represented here. Martin Horsell lives here. He's a son of Charlie Horsell. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Scarborough, I Scarborough mean, Mrs. Was president of the bank at that time, mm -hmm. and was, he'd been in the, he organized the First National Bank at Bottom in 1884. And he was he was considered well-to-do man. Well, now, uh, how long had your father been in Bonham when he uh, well, thought about the idea of the cotton mill? Well, I don't know. He, he and his father was a doctor in the Confederate Army and lived in Kentucky. And they, they came down to Texas by a covered wagon and settled over in Dallas. You know about what year that was? 69. 1869. And then when did they migrate on up towards... And he got in, uh, his father was a, was a doctor and uh, he got interested in the drug business and that's the way my father worked into it. You have any idea what year your father came to Bonham or Fannin County? 69. In 69? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, that was 69 was at Dallas, I believe you said. Yeah. And then when did they come on up here? Oh, well, I don't know. It was 69 when he came to Texas. But we had a college here for girls, Carlton College, at that time. And Uncle Charlie, the head of the Carlton College, he wanted a doctor to, in bottom he could count on. And he induced my grandfather to come to Bonham, and when he did, he had to bring his family, you know. Mm -hmm. They said right over here, right where McKnight's drugstore is now. What was your father's name? John C. John C. Mm -hmm. And how many uh, children were in your family? My father's family. Your father's family, well, yes. Dr. Bacon Saunders and Dr. Wirtz and Mr. Wirtz Saunders and Mr. Joe Saunders. They, they, they lived right over there where Mike Knight. Mm -hmm. Did you have any sisters? Huh? Was there, did you have some sisters? No, he had, he had some. Yeah, he had a No, of, but you. Did you? Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I had a. <coughs> I had one sister and two brothers, three brothers. Now, you say your father had to go back to the Carolinas to get the technical oh, know-how. Yeah, yeah, he had to learn something about the mm -hmm. cotton mill business. All they knew was they had a hundred thousand bale crop 
cotton crop that year, and everybody ha had some money. I thought they were going to have some money, and they wanted to put it into something. Yes. And they couldn't get away from cotton, you know, and they... <coughs> so they conceived the idea of making, getting, uh, organizing a cotton mill that could use up this cotton and make it into cloth. Mm-hmm. Uh, wh what, where was their market? Primar where was the market primarily at that time for the cotton well, product? I, I think they started out selling it in New York and and uh, all over Texas. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, when they first started, uh, what size workforce did they have? Well, they got up to where they had about 300 employed there, and men, women, and children, you know. I see. Mm-hmm. And uh, did they run a uh, eight-hour shift or two that shifts? I couldn't tell you that the details. I, I was just 12 years old at that time. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, later on, the uh, mill expanded a little, I think, and didn't it? And they got up, someone told me maybe 500 people was working there at I one time. I have. And then... Well, they, they, they were active right from the start. Mm -hmm. They brought a number of families in from the Carolinas that were all in, been brought up in cotton mill districts. Some of those families are uh, still uh, descendants living around here, Adnips and Adingers. And uh, also, I, the other day when I was taking Clarence Elkins home, he showed me uh, part of the cotton mill over there where they had uh, rows of houses where the people yeah, yeah, lived. Yeah, they had a number of houses for the, for the employees employees to live in and on the Was that part of their uh, uh, salary to get to live in the house or did I they? I don't know how the detail was, but they just didn't have enough houses to take care of these new people coming in, you see, and they had to build houses for them and the rent them. Um, uh, they paid their, took the rent out of the wages, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of added to the number of houses in Bonham then. Yeah. Uh, also, somewhere, someone told me that they had a uh, day nursery over there for the children of the employees. Do you had a day nursery? Yes, they organized a free kindergarten and uh, that's uh, since developing the Stevens uh, primary school over there now. I see. It is organized primarily for the people in the cotton mill to have, have a place to Send the kids to school right uh, young. Mm -hmm. You have any idea about what year that started? The uh, no, it was several years after the mill started. And the mill started in 1900. Takes several years to put a thing like that over, get and get people to subscribe to the capital stock and get the money up, you know, and and build the buildings and yeah, they're just right down there in the railroad yard. Yes. About how many acres do you think that covered at that time? I don't know. They they had a, a, a brick. I don't know what they called it there, where they made brick. Most of all the stores around the square. Well, now was the brick... Homemade brick, you know. Was that in conjunction with the cotton mill, no, or was that... before the cotton mill, before the cotton mill came to bottom, that the brick was... I see. Mm-hmm. And... The brickyard was flourishing and going then. Who, they who, wanted to be next to the railroad, I guess. Who was the owner of it? You have it? I don't know, but an old nigger named Barry Stone was a... He operated it, and he and a bunch of niggers down there. That's pretty hard work, I imagine, wasn't it? Huh? That's pretty hard work, I imagine. You bet. It's all outdoors in the yard. Then you just decided you didn't want to be in the cotton mill, and so you went in the banking business. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. When did you first go into banking? 1906. 1906. And you stayed in banking until when you retired and what year I was that? I the first national bank over 60 years. That's a good long time, yeah. isn't it? Sure it is. You've seen lots of 
things go on in Bonham in a business way then over yeah. the years. Uh, during World War I, did the cotton mill make any type of cloth or for... Uh, they made the duck up? and uh, canvas, you know. That's mm -hmm. all they ever made. They never made any colored cloth. I see. Mm -hmm. What about World War II? Did they step up their production down there then? I guess so. They operated up until, uh, well, for a good many years, of course. Do you recall about what year they uh, discontinued their uh, activity in Bonham? Well, it is sold out to uh, a man in South Texas. I think he bought the stock and he started operating. He didn't do so hot. Mm -hmm. You don't have any idea about what year that was? No, that was about 15, 20 years ago, I guess. I see. And he operated for a short time and then... They decided to close it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had other interests. He was interested in other mills. Mm. Well, uh, the economy of Bonham then for a number of years was kind of hinged on that cotton mill then. Oh, to my a lot. yes. Yes, it was the biggest thing in the town. And uh, Fannin County, I guess, was pretty much uh, devoted to the raising of cotton for a number of years. In other words, their primary crop then was cotton. Oh, in everything, cotton was king then, yes. you know, everything hinged mm -hmm. on the cotton crop. The merchants, they sold their goods during the year to the farmers on credit, and they depended in the fall to credit, to collect that money, you know, and banks, same thing, they loaned money to the farmers to make a crop, and they depended on collecting their money in the fall. Mm -hmm. Everything depended on collecting, getting, collecting out of cotton in the fall of the year. What about uh, who did the buying for the mill? Do you remember who? Oh, my dad was the whole cheese for a number until he lived, as long as he lived. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I imagine Bonham had a lot of cotton buyers back in those days. Oh, my, didn't? yes. Cotton buyers from come in by it. Cutting around the square, you know, the farmers would haul the cotton in, haul it, come in on the, uh, the mules on team on the wagon, and they'd hang a uh, hitch around the square, then had a chain all around the square. I see. Cotton buyers would get out there and sample the cotton and buy it right and give them tickets, and they'd take the ticket to the bank and get the money. Any of the uh, cotton buyers? Still living in Bonham that you knew at the, back in those days? Oh, I do see. John Arledge, I guess, he's uh, connected with the first night of man. He's the last cotton bird I can remember. Mm -hmm. He was right active. And he's been in the bank 15, 20 years. And well, that was quite a sight. I remember as a child, I'd see the cotton buyers and they'd cut the cotton oh, pull, open, you pull know, and pull it out. And Get the length of the fiber. And that depended on what they paid for it, I presume. How, lo how long the fiber was, why, that depended on what they gave for yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Of course, there was some major cotton farms then were not located in Bonham, but located elsewhere in the cities. And then the Europe, the Europe was by a lot of cotton in those days. Mm. That's the only supply they had was in America, you know. Well, now the railroad, I guess, came in here uh, back in the 80s sometime, so you had railroad transportation. Yeah, that railroad. That's why they organized it. That's why they're located down there, being near the railroad, of course. Yes. Well, you have seen uh, Bonham then from a, almost all angles as far as the town is concerned then. I mean, you came here in what year did you say? 88 when Eight. I was born. Yes, sir. Right here in Bonham. Yeah. Mm. Well, I've never lived anywhere else. Well, that's about the year the courthouse was built then, wasn't it? That's right. That's the year that... Uh, the courthouse was. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if it was remodeling 88, but they, they, they had, I guess, they had a log cabin or something down there they, for the early courthouse. But they built that present structure in 88. What year were you married? Huh? What year were you married? 13. 1913. Where'd you meet your bride? Here in Bonham? Yeah. Uh, she reared over in, in Greenville. Greenville. Mm-hmm. And uh, how many children do y'all have? Well, we had a boy and a girl. Mm-hmm. What was your son's name? Dick Junior. Mm-hmm. He's a young in Rubicam in New York City. He's been in New York City long and he lived in Bonham. He's been in New York City and working that firm about 30 years. I see. Is how about the daughter? Well, she married. She went to university and met a boy from down in close to Waco, and they married. And they got a whole. They had a bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. Well, these grandchildren are pretty important things to have. You, you know, you, you know, you can just spoil them all you want to, and then turn them back to their parents. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, we get. We think a lot of our grandchildren. How many do you all have, all told? Well, we have, I think, five or six grandchildren and, and uh, a whole bunch of great-grandchildren. I see. Mm -hmm. They all live down around the middle of the state. Does the son from New York get back very often? Every fall. Every, every fall. fall. Well, yeah. that's, that's great. Well, uh, what church have you and Mrs. Uh, mm. What church have you and Mrs. Saunders? First Christian. First Christian. Right, right. You're Christian. you're real close then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, was that church uh, the original church, or did yeah. you? No. I joined that church when I was just a kid, about seventy-five, eighty years ago. What about the church building? Is it the same one, or is it a different? That bit? church building there was built in nineteen twelve. They had an old frame building there before that. Mm -hmm. Just tore it down and re tore the frame building down and built yeah, right on the yeah. same ground. Mm -hmm. I've been, see, I was reared on that corner there where McKnight is. That's where, my, that's where I was born. I was reared there and I was just across the street from the church, you see. I never had an excuse not to go to church. <laughs> Well, that's a pretty good habit for a yes, person to have. Yes, it is. Well, I certainly appreciate the information, Mr. Saunders, well, you've I given. I don't know how much information it was. It's, well, it's I pretty... I don't have the best memory in the world. I can think of a lot of other things, baby, but I can't think of them now. Well, that's uh, a great deal about the cotton mill and... Uh, so we will uh, record this and let it become a part of the uh, historical information which is on file in the courthouse. You know, they have an office yeah. there. And uh, I want to thank you and uh, Ms. Saunders for uh, letting me come over and, and talk well, to you. Glad to see you. Glad to have you.